So um, anyway, I'm gonna start here. So here's a microarray chip. It just looks like a humble glass slide, but on this slide is literally tens of thousands of genes that we can screen to figure out what genes are turned on in various types of experiments. In this case, this has happened to be caterpillars. We looked at caterpillars better to you know, the pathogen without a pathogen, just to understand gene expression. And, and as you imagine, pathogens stimulate certain types of genes. And so at Western Illinois University, we have this scanner here from Axon. It's a GenePix microarray scanner. And that's going to be used to measure the genes on this chip. So behind the machine, there's a little uh, switch that easily turns it on. You can hear it starting up. And then over here, we're going to start the program. And we're going to use this GenePix Pro software that comes with it. A lot of this microarray software and different microarray scanners that are out there work kind of in the, basically in the same manner. So if you know one, you have an idea of how the other ones technically work. You'll hear that the machine is starting up now, so it's warming up. And then after that, we're going to put this slide in and then scan it for uh, uh, features and see what kind of genes might be turned on. Again, there could be tens of thousands of genes on this slide that you'll see as little spots, but you need a scanner to see it. So we have lasers that fluoresce the dyes that are on here and things of that nature. Now you'll notice that there's labeled sites, and so the Agilent side is going to actually be pointed down. We open up the lid. This lid actually kind of falls, so I'm going to put a hand, extra hand there. And then I'm going to open up the slide carrier and then put the Agilent side down. That's the side that was actually printed in this particular chip. Each chip can be a little different. I'm going to make sure it's seated nicely. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to make sure that this closes and clicks. And then I'm going to gently shut the lid. And now we're going to scan the chip. Okay. So I'll go ahead and hit the light switch. We have different uh, buttons you can push. As long as the camera works OK. Yeah, it works OK. We have. Oh, it's getting awful dark now. So anyway, we have our preview scan, and this gives you an overall scan of the entire microarray. <clears throat> the first thing that you'll see is a red image. This is a red laser scanning the entire microarray. Again, this is in a preview mode, and so if you look at the image here, you can see kind of a shadow of where the actual spots were labeled. I'm going to change the contrast a little bit. And you can kind of see a shadow of where the spots are. Now this is a really low resolution on this preview scan. We're talking around 40 micrometers. Then we're going to do a scan that will allow us to do um, 5 micrometers where we're going to really analyze the individual spots. And so here's the image right now. Again, there's going to be two lasers because we're looking at two different treatments in this case, or really hypothetically. We're looking at a treatment that was, a, a caterpillar was treated with a bacterial pathogen and without a pathogen. And so we're going to compare those two different treatments. So we labeled them one red and one green, and I'll, I'll explain that in another presentation. So this is just strictly on how the scanning occurs. Anyway, you can see that the overall image of the glass slide is being scanned right here. And you'll see, notice that there's four blocks, and those represent four arrays. So on this chip, there's actually four microarrays. Each one of these microarrays represents 44,000 spots. Here you can see the Agilent coming up. Um, that's where this chip happened to be manufactured from. And now you're going to hear in a moment the scanner switch over to the green laser, and the green laser is going to go on. You can hear it in a second, click over. All right, so now the green laser scanning. Now you're gonna want an overall kind of yellowish image with an equal number of yellow and reds and greens. And each one of these spots will represent a gene of interest. And so this, again, is a preview scan, and then we're going to go into an actual um, focused scan. This one is too green. That means that we probably need to reduce 
the green detector so it's more yellowish. And I'll explain that in the, in the regular lecture or in a moment. Here's another one being scanned. And again, we're after a more overall yellow color. So this one actually looks better down here. I'm going to slide this block, uh, box down, and this will be the area that, of the chip glass slide that we're going to actually analyze most closely this time around. We'd actually analyze all of them, but for now we're just going to analyze this one here. Okay. So looking at it, it's kind of a mixture of reds and greens. We're going to scan it now on a more refined scale. Now I'm going to hit another button that allows me to do a more fine scale scan. I'm just going to move this down here. And get the overall view. So we're just going to tell it to scan just this array right here. So I'm going to draw this down around the actual block. This saves memory by keeping it just in one little area. Because when you do this fine scale, it takes a lot of memory to take a picture of all of this. So we're just going to try to just maximize our computer space by just narrowing into one area that you actually want to scan. And so I just want to make sure that the array is completely covered with our box to indicate where the array is. And now I'm going to do a more careful scan of it. And again, I'm trying to get an overall yellow color. The idea is that most of the genes on the treatment are not being affected by the bacteria. Most of the genes are stable, and it's only a subset of genes that are really being affected at any given time. Now granted, if the insect's on the verge of dying, it might be a different story. It might have a bigger extreme, but the overall image should be yellow between these two different treatments. One treatment was treated with a green dye, in this case we'll call it the bacterial treatment, and the red treatment with the genes from the, and again when I say genes I'm talking about message RNA, was treated with the red dye. And we can go into how that happens in another presentation. Anyway, now you're seeing the more careful scan, and you can really see the spots now. The white spots represent um, features, because we call these spots or features. These are the actual individual genes. Um, we call those features, and if they're white, that usually means that there's so much RNA there that's been labeled that it's saturated beyond the detector's limits, actually, and the high end. If you don't see a spot, it means it's not really being expressed at a level we can detect. And sometimes you see these little artifacts, that's actually this like maybe some fiber from clothing that's attached or something, some dust and things of that nature. So now looking at the image, you can see that it's kind of a more or less, you know, reasonable amount of yellow and green in there. It could be a little bit more yellow maybe, you could argue. And so what you can do is you can reduce the fold and multiplier gain for the green dye to give it a little bit more yellow color. And so we're reducing the sensitivity of the detector in such a way that the overall image looks a little bit more yellowish and not too green or too red. We're trying to scale to, to, to between these two different treatments, again, to try to um, control for human error and things of that nature. So it looks pretty good, but I think now that I think I got the PMT set more accurately, maybe it could be a little greener. Again, there's a histogram we can look at, and it does say that the red's a little bit higher. So maybe I need to increase the green actually a little bit. So I'm gonna increase the sensitivity of the green just to hair. And now we're gonna scan it one last time. I'm going to say, so I'm just going to, okay, so this is going to be our final scan and then we'll save the image. And then I'll show you how to overlay the image with um, a map that tells us what genes are what for each of those individual spots. So here we go. Here's the red coming through again. 
you see the, how much more obvious the spots are at that fine, micro, fine micrometers. So again, each one of these spots hypothetically represents a unique gene in the case of this particular caterpillar. And there's 44,000 more or less of those spots on here. So we're able to screen nearly the entire genome of this caterpillar in regards to these treatments. I mean, obviously we may be missing a few, but I mean, we're talking about thousands of genes are doing a pretty good job of screening them. Okay, so now the red's done. Now we're going to scan the green. see the nice spots and so looking at any given spot like this spot is red that means that that gene was suppressed when the caterpillar was feeding on bacteria while if it was green that means it was stimulated because of feeding on the bacteria for this particular example these other ones that are kind of a dull color represent genes that weren't really turned on to a level that we can make a statement about and if they're more yellow that means the gene was equally turned on among the two different treatments. So that's generally how we analyze this. Now again, we're going to actually get intensity values called fluorescent units or FU units that can help us to um, do statistics on it later. But this is this, but qualitatively speaking, green means the gene was suppressed, red means it was stimulated in the case of our particular experiment. All right, so I'm going to save the image. I'm going to call it Rucci's Practice. And that concludes the scanning um, video. Thank you. Bye.